Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez. I hope you guys enjoyed this past weekend's live stream and all of the previous ones. Make sure you make time or make time afterwards to watch it on replay. But the best way to do it is to join us at the live stream party every Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Daylight Savings Time, whatever time of the year it happens to be, but 6 p.m. Eastern Time, okay? So, we're gonna talk about, oh, this is gonna be really, really good, and lots of questions have been recently asked about this problem. Most people get a printer and don't use it regularly. So you know what happens when you don't use a printer regularly? It clogs. And usually it rears its ugly head when you try to print something that you know should turn out a certain way and all of a sudden it's drastically different. It may have been an important job and before you press print, you should have ran a nozzle check. A nozzle check takes very little ink, a couple of minutes to perform and we'll tell you straight up if you are ready to print, okay? If you're really ready to print because all 100% of all your nozzles need to be firing well, a couple of nozzles here and there is not gonna harm, especially on an Epson printer. It's not gonna really show much difference, but on a Canon printer, a couple of nozzles can then snowball to many more nozzles. So what do you do? Don't print blindly. Always run a nozzle check for every important job that you plan to print, especially a lot of you guys go out and immediately start using and discovering all of these exotic papers that are not cheap. They cost a lot of money compared to the regular resin coated pro luster that they give you or semi-gloss or any of the other brand papers for Canon and Epson. They're not that expensive compared to some of the other brands, especially the fine art high-end surfaces. So here's what you should do. Nozzle check. This is very difficult to see. You're probably gonna see just nothing but a blank piece of paper on top you will see the nozzle check for a 3880 in this case. And as I looked at it earlier, on the very bright light, the yellow is almost impossible to see, but if you look carefully, you can see that all of the uh, little lines are there. So is the Vivid Light Magenta, Cyan, and so forth all the way across the grays. And remember, don't be confused with one of these printers that has nine colors. There will always be only eight blocks of color represented here because one of those blacks is not being used. It may be the matte black, it may be the photo black. So the goal here is to have a complete set of nozzles represented here by little lines. And that's what Epson printers basically generate for you. All right, so Canon printers in one of my favorites, the Pro 10. This is the kind of nozzle check that it will generate for you. Basically, all of the channels are represented, including Chroma Optimizer. You have the PC, yellow, magenta, red, PM, gray, photo black, cyan, CO, Chroma Optimizer, and matte black. So there is no black ink sharing here. Every channel has a specific color of ink. In this case, what you're looking for here is these two little blocks right here that seem a little raised. That's where the chrome optimizer was laid down over a band of gray, basically. You need a loop to look at this because it just looks like a homogenous band with no problems whatsoever. But if you use a loop and if you print this on a good matte paper, not plain paper, but a glossy paper, luster paper, matte paper, whatever, you will be able to then discern if there are any lines missing. When you use a loop, you're gonna see that it's basically a bunch of little dashes represented. But this paper is okay, but it tends to wick away a little bit. And so those little dashes kind of blend together. So you really do not see if you actually have any nozzles that are not firing correctly but you should be running one of these. And by the way, one of the benefits that you get on both units is that you get the firmware version indicator here. For those of you who worry about firmware and third-party ink sources. All right, 
So what happens if your nozzle check is bad? Well, you do a cleaning cycle. On an Epson printer, it's global. There's no way not to use all eight, nine, or whatever the case is, colors. They are all, all going to be used on a Canon printer, such as a Pro 10. It gives you a choice, two zones. I believe one of them has five and the other one five as well. On the Pro 1, as well as the Pro 1000, you have three zones, each containing four colors. So you can just basically run a cleaning cycle for the zone that contains a color that is not firing correctly. That way you don't waste ink on the other colors that you have. Instead of running all 12 colors on this puppy, which would be extremely wasteful, you only choose the zone that contains the color that is having a problem, if you will. Now, Epson printers cannot do that. Why do Canon printers allow you to do that? Because the perch unit is subdivided into two or three zones and you're able to apply vacuum to just one single zone, which then basically seals itself against those four nozzle sets for that particular zone. The Epson does not. It just has one basically large gasket that seals against a complete nozzle plate. So all of the colors are going to be sucked on and wasted. Well, not wasted because you're actually going to clear your clog, hopefully. Now, what if you do not want to run a cleaning cycle? Well, there are many recommendations that are out there and a lot of different files that you can print, so-called purge files, which will allow you to sort of clear up minor clogs. If it's not a major clog, don't run a cleaning cycle. Just run one of these purge sheets. And I have all of these files available in my Facebook group. So just join up, be approved immediately, basically. I'm always looking. And then download the pack, okay, the test image pack. And this is one of them right here. Just basically a bunch of random lines, different widths, containing all of the basic colors, RGB and CMY and black. So you run that and it should, by all intents and purposes, clear a minor nozzle problem, okay? How do you tell that you have a nozzle problem when you print an image? And by the way, if we ever discover something odd happening, stop printing on one of these. Do not continue printing. You will harm your printhead. Epson printers, no problem. They're cold firing and they can print without ink, basically. Nothing will happen to the printhead, but not so on a Canon printer. They will burn up rather quickly if you starve that particular channel from the cooling effects of ink. So anyway, print this one or two. Again, it'll use some ink, of course, but it's not gonna use as much ink as a cleaning cycle. And this might be just as effective. Now, how do you go about printing this? Oh, file print. No, 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 you don't do that. You go to your printer driver and you turn off color management, okay? And in your application, you tell it to let the printer driver control color, okay? So the printer driver is gonna be told, hey, you control color, and the driver says, but I'm not using color management. That's exactly what we want, okay? We want the actual individual inks to be kind of used more than if you were using color management because color management will start to composite all of the inks. Why does that matter? What about, what if I'm just printing a magenta stripe? Shouldn't I just use magenta ink? No. If I'm printing a red stripe, shouldn't I just use red ink? No. Cyan, no, and you, you know the rest. Every single color cannot be printed directly off of your driver with that particular matching color. Besides, yellow, cyan, magenta, red, orange, blue, and whatever other color, green in some printers, are not actually yellow, magenta, red, cyan, blue, and green or even black, okay? They are not perfect matches to optical versions of those colors. They require compositing to be able to then reproduce those colors, optically that is, correctly. And I'll show you an example at the end. 
Now, somebody made this really odd looking perch sheet. Now, you might look at it and think, well, it's just a bunch of scribbles. And that's exactly what it is. They used a pressure type stylus on a tablet and used RGB, CMY, and created a bunch of lines. And they are purposely randomly located. They're not longitudinal or horizontal. They're just random. This actually will exercise your printhead quite well, okay? Probably a lot better than this, okay? Hard to believe, isn't it? But yeah, this will actually work. And this is also available in my Facebook group, that is. So just make sure that not only are you letting the printer driver control color with no color management chosen or color matching in the case of a Canon printer, but please choose a phototype paper and the highest possible quality available. Do not choose plain paper or standard quality. Highest quality photo paper, glossy, luster, semi-gloss, matte, whatever. And by doing so, you will force the printer driver to use not 100%, not 90, not even 80, but at least a lot of magenta ink for that magenta stripe, red ink for that red stripe, green ink for that green stripe, and so forth. Now, let me show you another file that we have available. This is a Whopper right here. And this is, get this, watch this. Yellow. Does that look ye like ye real yellow to you? It kind of looks greenish, doesn't it? Cyan. This is what most people call blue. Green. Magenta. Red. This looks orange to me. But that's what red ink looks like. That's what red ink is. It's more orange than red. And blue. Wait a minute. That looks like purple to me, doesn't it? Actually, optical blue looks like purple. Okay. And then you have black as well, and a gray little patch right here. Now this is printed on just cheapo paper, but printed with no color management. That's why these colors look a little odd because they are printed with as much of the actual ink without compositing, okay? And that will force a particular channel to you know push out as much as that particular ink it can and possibly then unclog whatever nozzles are producing problems. This is a good one right here, but it does use a lot of ink. Now, you could just use QImage. If you have QImage Ultimate, do the unclog sheet, the purge sheet to unclog your printer. And again, this has been designed specifically for this. Different widths, they are angular stripes as well to systematically work adjacent you know, nozzles. As you are printing an angular line, nozzles are being used ta -ta 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 -ta, like a little machine gun. And then this set of angular lines right here as well. This is actually quite good. But again, always print on a glossy paper choice, not glossy paper, cheapo paper. But choose glossy paper choice, luster paper choice, high-end matte paper choice, semi-gloss, whatever. As long as it's a photo type paper, no color management. And on QImage, you basically tell QImage itself to not apply color management at all. You just choose off, as if you were printing a, a chart for a profile. Now, last but not least, let me show you this other file that I have. Now, I want you guys to take a good look at this and actually Printed on this crappy paper is not going to give you the, the actual effect that I'm looking for here. But we have a blue circle, black to strong blue, strong blue to white, green, red, yellow, magenta, cyan, black, of course. The same thing here, a series of transitions, a picture of a uh, one guy on a boat. And this is used as a uh, gamma testing type image for your printer. And then whatever that is, a bunch of, uh, looks like a bunch of, uh, oh, it's upside down. No wonder. It looks like a bunch of fabric at a shop. 
and a bunch of fish on a, looks like a, a piece of a plastic that's kind of bluish in color. This was printed with no color management, okay? So it's, it used as pure inks as it possibly could to mix the colors. And because this is an actual continuous tone image and this one, and kind of this one, and sort of, and of course, this one, it tried to mix them, but it didn't have any instructions from, say, an ICC profile. Let me show you what happens when you use an ICC profile. And the most drastic difference will be in the fish. Check that out. And, of course, the cloth. And remember, this is just plain paper. This print did not exercise those channels as well as this one did. This, let me line this up so you guys can see. Notice, if you will, and again, this is a torture test. So don't look at this and say, oh, this looks better. Actually, no, it does not. This is supposed to be red, but the ink is actually orange. But I'm glad it printed orange because then I know that it actually used about 90% of that orange, that red channel, rather than try to create a perfect red like it did here by mixing some other, maybe a little bit of magenta, added to that to create this. So this did not exercise the red channel as much as possible. And look at this cyan. This is cyan, no color management. See, the profile tried to correct everything. The yellow, not much difference, but that yellow ink kind of looks greenish if you really look at it. And so anyway, long story short, the printer will be better exercised when it comes to trying to clear a minor nozzle problem, which is what these are for, rather than doing a massive set of cleaning cycles, which will eventually do the job, but you will waste enormous amounts of ink. Use one of these types of charts and print, and then run another nozzle check immediately afterwards. If you get a little bit of an improvement, a few more lines are showing, stop, let it rest. Come back a couple of hours later and print Another purge sheet, again, with no color management. That's important. No color management and choosing a phototype paper for the paper choice. Use cheap paper to actually print on and high quality. You want that print to, to take forever to print, okay? So the slowest method it will be the most rewarding one at the end. So that is it. This is one way that you can actually clear up any nozzle problems without having to run massive cleaning cycles like a lot of people will do. I just cringe when I hear, oh, I ran seven cleaning cycles in a row. Oh my God, it's, 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 it's a miracle your printer is still alive. Really, it's very, very tough on the printer to run consecutive cleaning cycles like that. Don't do that ever. Maximum three, and then you need to stop, okay? You need to stop, test, and also check walk away let the printer rest come back later if you are refilling that's another story okay that's another story because the so-called nozzle clogs may be due to your faulty refilling technique it could be and so that really has nothing to do with nozzles being clogged you may have air in your system everybody says air in the lines but not all printers have lines per se Pro 10 doesn't have any lines. This one does, P800 does, P600 does, but the Pro 10 Pro 1 do not. The Pro 1 does. So don't say lines when there are no lines. Any cartridge that writes on top of a print head, that printer has no lines, okay? So it's a direct transfer of ink from the cartridge to the print head body itself and straight out of the nozzles. That's it. Oh, by the way, don't call, say, the magenta that may be faulty, a magenta printhead. Because <laughs> it is not. The printhead is the complete unit. Pro 100 has eight channels, so it is a channel, not a printhead. Okay? Pro 10, 10 channels. Pro 1, 12 channels. P800 has eight channels, but it uses nine colors, so it has to share one of those channels. 
12. So that is it. All right. So please, before any kind of important print job, what do you do? Nozzle check. Yes, nozzle check. I thought I heard that. That's the most important thing you can do. That will save you from wasting a sheet of $7 paper. And it could be that high. So that will help you mitigate any kind of problems that could possibly even harm your printer. It's happened to me numerous times, okay? Where I have assumed the printer is fine. I'll just go ahead and print. And lo and behold, I get some crappy looking print. And it's simply due because dumb me did not run a nozzle check because as soon as I run a nozzle check, oh, there's the, there's the reason for my crappy looking print. It's simple. All it takes is about two minutes to do. So make sure you do that before any print job that is important to you. Do that often with a Canon printer because again, you wanna make sure that all of your cartridges are firing correctly before you commit to a print job of say three, four, five, even 10 prints in a row. You wanna make sure that you're not gonna be printing with a cartridge that is not feeding ink or a channel that is clogged. It's gonna be disastrous, okay? So make sure you do that. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe as always. Happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.